Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Edbud here, and it's about that time for another episode of Running Shoe, yay or nay. This is the show where I look at some running shoes that are perhaps recently released or soon to be released and give them a thumbs up or thumbs down as to whether I'm going to test them out, put them through their paces, probe and prod them, and possibly running them in the near future. If I do give a shoe a nay though, it doesn't mean to say it's a bad shoe or that I don't like it, I've got a bit of an issue with it or something like that. No, not at all. Some shoes just don't really work for some people. It does perplex me sometimes why certain YouTubers purchase shoes that simply aren't really made for them. Why would you do that? It's kind of like me being a rockabilly sort of rock and roll guy playing one of those spiky metal guitars. It's just not going to happen. It's got to be a Gretsch or a Gibson or a Fender, something like that. Anyway, I digress. Let's get to it. First up today is Hoka's Rincon 2. I really like the first version of the Rincon. Very light shoe, even in my size. I think I may have visited this shoe previously in a running shoe yay or nay, but I want to revisit it after I receive some new information. Certainly music to my ears to hear that people say the Rincon 2 is a little bit wider in the toe box. There's a little bit more material there. It was certainly foot hugging on the first version. That was really my key issue with the shoe. I wasn't really that bothered about the fact that it was wearing down fairly quickly. It was a really nice nippy nimble shoe. I have very fond memories of running around in that one back in September, October time, I think it was. Seems like a long time ago now. That lockdown business has just made time very fluid and almost stretched time. It's very strange. Another thing I love about the Rincon series is that it's cheap. £105? That's not bad. It doesn't hurt your wallet too much. And the wallet's really hurting right now. Can you hear it? No, neither can I. But certainly that sort of price is a lot more digestible. I mentioned the weight. The lower 200s is always good for me. I'm a tall guy, but I'm a slight guy as well. When you've got big giganto boat feet like me, Finding light shoes is a tough old game. I really love the surf style vibes of the original. I'm not really blown away by the gentleman's colorways. They're just a bit, I don't know. One of them reminds me of a wasp and that's not a good thing. Don't like wasps, I really don't like them. What purpose do they serve? I'll tell you, none. I can accept the outsole wear. It's just a, a good shoe. Even just looking at it now, it's bringing back the memories. I think the ladies' versions of the Rincon 2 are a lot more acceptable, just nicer colorways. Hey, come on, Hoka. The guys don't always just want those red and blue, darker colorways. We want something fun. Sockany have given us fun. You know, the White Mutant version of the Endorphin Pro and the Speed are just mad. That's what we want. We like mad. What do you think, viewers? So the Rincon 2, for me, even though it's just an upper change, that's the main thing they needed to change. It's a yay for me. There's lots of daily shoes knocking on the door right now. It's just like a little Richard song. Fortunately, this next shoe can come in. The Dynablast seems a refinement to the Nova Blast blueprint that ASICS released earlier this year. Similar price, which is always good, 110 Earth credits. A shoe I was a little skeptical of initially, but it really won me over with that lovely cushioned midsole and slightly wild cyberpunk style looks. The Dynablast seems to be a more bare bones offering though from ASICS. A more refined upper I'm hearing with a more cut back version of that Flight Foam Blast midsole. A little less angular perhaps and they've hopefully reduced the weight a little bit. It's quite a heavy shoe really, the Nova Blast for me. So chopping off a few grams is a good thing. ASIC suggests that the upper has been scaled back so there's less layers to it and they even reckon that the shoe will feel more wispy underfoot. What does that mean, wispy? Where have they got this word from? Anyone have any ideas? Willow the wisp perhaps, I don't know. Don't worry though guys, we've got AHA rubber on the outsole. High abrasion rubber, you know that it's just gonna, it's gonna last longer than you are. I would have preferred trying to get hold of the lime green and black version but Alas, nowhere to be seen over here in the UK right now. But I can stomach the more business-like attaché case style of this black and grey version. It's certainly a yay for me for the ASICS Dynablast. Even sounds good, doesn't it, when you say it? Shoe 3. 
I noticed that the Adidas Adi Zero Adios Pro is coming back into the store. I say the store, I mean the online store, because, you know, stores are open, but stock replenishment seems very slow right now on pretty much everything, from lettuce to byros. I spotted a red, blue, and white version on the Adidas website, on their app. App's a bit weird, I've got to be honest. It's a bit clunky. Just strange navigation around it. In fact, shoe sales apps need to improve. They're just frustrating sometimes. I'm there pressing things and just becoming more befuddled as time goes by. This red, white, and blue version, the colorway also spills down onto the outsole as well. That rubber looks almost Play-Doh-like. Cellar mesh in the upper though, you know how I love cellar mesh. On the Adi Zero Pro, it's just an 8.5 millimeter drop, so it's gonna feel similar to the Boston 9. Really love running that shoe, all sorts of paces, top shoe. And of course, the famed 39.5 millimeter midsole stack, heading down to 31 millimeters in the forefoot. It's big. I'm sure the Baby Spice will be on the Adidas website pressing refresh when these are released on the 13th of September. Adidas reckon these are only 225 grams in the UK, size eight and a half. So I'm expecting a similar weight to the Adi Zero Pro and the Boston 9, around about 280 grams maybe in my UK, size 11. At a price though of 169 pounds, a little easier to stomach perhaps. It's a price I'm willing to pay to experience the energy rods. I'm really intrigued to see and feel what the implementation of those blue rods are like. I've been a big fan of all the Adidas shoes I've tested out recently, so certainly the Adidas Adi Zero Adios Pro is a yay for me. Look at that, I managed to say it all in one go as well without messing it up once. Like a rocket from the crypt, Hoka are set to release the Hoka Oni Oni Rocket X very soon. This is a shoe that's really gone under the radar. I mean, they launched it in the US earlier this year. Well, say they launched it, it was one of those yeah, we launched it, but it sold out within seconds, and I don't think it really launched at all. Hoka quote the men's US size 9 as being 210 grams here, so that certainly grabbed my attention. Only a 5mm heel to toe drop as well, and it's a unisex shoe, so there won't be any men's or women's variations on this one. Now, I noted the outsole section of the shoe um, recently while watching a video from Sage Canada has some different rubber sections that perhaps then appeared on the version used earlier in the year at the US Marathon Trials. It could just be that there was white rubber on the bottom of that one and this new one has some colored rubber. That might be the difference. I think it must be remembered that the winner of the women's US Marathon Trials earlier in the year was wearing the Hoka Oni Oni Rocket X. Alephine Tulimuk, I hope I've said that correctly. I'm very sorry if I haven't wore that very shoe and was triumphant. What a superb run. I've actually been reading a lot about that lady. Very inspiring woman. Someone like that can inspire anybody, regardless of gender or race or whatever. Incredible lady. Winning a race of that level, wearing that sort of shoe, I think you've got to take both athlete and shoe very seriously. The early quoted cost for this one was $200, but I think they may have dropped it slightly. I have seen quoted prices of about $180. A possible September release on this one. I think they've been holding back with this shoe, waiting till things calm down a little bit, and they have in certain parts of the world. Hence my inclusion in today's running shoe, yay or nay. So, is the Rocket X going to be a yay or nay. For me, it's going to be a nay. I just don't think that the foam used there and the implementation is going to really do an awful lot for me. I didn't have the best time testing out the Carbon X. It really didn't stand out to me as being a shoe I just wanted to run in all the time. It didn't inspire me that much. Hope you've enjoyed this episode of Running Shoe Yay or Nay. Please let me know in the comments below as to which of the shoes would be a yay or nay for you. Today, it's a movie recommendation. One of my favorite movies of all time, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. I mean, everything about this film just speaks to me. It's just great. I think pretty much if you haven't seen this film, what have you been doing? A really fantastic film from start to finish. I really love the character of Edward Rooney. 
he's a school principal who's got this hunch that Ferris Bueller is trying to pull the wool over his eyes. Some of the interactions between Edward Rooney and his secretary are fantastic. I really love the fact that Ferris uses the sample keyboard at one point to imitate his illness with various coughs and sneezes. And the twist and shout musical portion at the end of the film is really special. Although people who are fans of classic cars should be very wary about watching the end section of the film. If you haven't seen it, go and watch it. What a great film. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Right, it's about that time to eat some more pizza and do some general chilling out, some rest and relaxation with Mrs. Edbud and Fergus. If you're new to the channel and you haven't done so already, I would very much appreciate it if you'd hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications of when I launch those new videos. It also helps the channel out a huge amount if you give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud and I'll be seeing you.